Okay, so we've loaded everything onto the tractor, everything from the hole is gone, and we're going to make our way over to the big lot. We've got enough money for this now, and I'm going to be honest, the plus side to all this happening now is that we've got enough money to move, we've got enough money to buy the new lot, I can't drive as you can clearly see, and basically we're going to go over, buy the new lot, and then we're going to go and dump all this stuff down from the tractor, and then we're going to go to the shop and spend all of our hard-earned money on our very first automated plot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive over to the edge. Now, as you can clearly see, if you've seen some of my videos before, there used to be a big grassy knoll right in front of me. The land has been changed a little bit more over here to give the player more variety of what they can do in this place. Instead of just building in the same place, he's given us a little bit more of a bigger area. As you can see, he's opened up the beach and he's made the actual build area in the water a little bit wider as well. Which is quite nice considering that if you ever watched most people play this game, they always go for the centre section and then that's pretty much it for it. Now as you can see in the background you can see a brand new section of the map which is where the boat is and that's actually, we can go up there a little bit later on, that's fine. But this is another part that he's added in that we've got a little bit more variety where we can build a smaller plant in the corner so we can have a little corner building, we can do bits and pieces over here. Genuinely he's just made it a little bit more accessible for all the players to actually get in on this as well which is quite nice to actually see a little bit more development in this land and you know it's given it a lot more options. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty the truck and then we're going to go and buy our first automated plant. Alright, so since the beach has been flattened out a bit, we can put our pipe in here, which means we're only going up a little bit. We're not going to be like going up a bit over the knoll, which was over there to start with. We're going to bring our pipe along the side of this tree and our starting lot is going to be along this part here. First bit of diggable soil, which is good. And then we're going to go from there, we're going to go into Bridgeport and we're going to spend the rest of our money. So as you can see, it's a less convoluted line than it was before, which is always good. It means everything's a little bit more simple to start with, especially when the fact when it comes to like new players, it, you know, it just takes the edge off of like trying anything too complicated, which is always quite nice to see. Okay, money is on the truck. Let's go to Bridgeport. Right, so off to Bridgeport we go. Now the shops have changed a little bit. If you haven't seen the dev vlogs, I'm going to show you now how weird the uh, the town now looks. So on our right hand side, we now have a place where we can buy new tractors. They're supposed to be a little bit better. So uh, if you've got a couple of grand, buy one of those. Obviously we've got the scrapyard and then we've got the main shopping centre. Now the shopping centre has changed. This is now where we're buying conveyor belts from and everything else. The other shop, which was the dino store, which is where we get our pipe work from and all the other stuff that we're going to need, and obviously our drills as well. Now, the reason why this guide is a little bit different from the original guide uh -huh. is because we can't have uh, five sorters to start with anymore. And the reason why is because they're a little bit more expensive. Also, goliaths are a little bit more expensive, ram drills are a little bit more expensive, and everything's just got a slightly higher price tag. These bits here are the second part to automation. After you've basically dragged all your stuff over and gone through all the other joys of this game, uh, this is like your next stage of automation. We will show you this in part three because there are 1,400 each, basically. So one round drill, one harvester. Now, as you can see, and I'll, I'll put this down for a second, I'll show you. So the harvester itself has had the uh, the exit, the, the chute, has been moved up a bit so you can actually put a conveyor belt underneath and it just it just clips in nicely which is all right the ram drill has been hired a little bit so the chute fires into the top of the harvester and the top of the harvester has been altered because it was a little bit like mongy and i can't think of any other uh -huh. word to describe it apart from that at the moment which is a bit of a shame so let's get back to this one ram drill one harvester two t pipes one water valve ten straight pipes four pressure tanks, four filters, five elbow pipes, one furnace, and we're going to need another crucible because we're going to be collecting other materials as well, and four corks. Okay, conveyor belt store. Stick this in there. Like I said, new store, new awesome, and these new things are pretty cool as well. So later on when you're like when you're whacking out loads of different like machines and you've got loads of things being like you know thrown around these help gems stay on the side so they're conveyor belt barriers they work on vertical as well you stick them to the side and it's all good this is also a new thing as well the conveyor centralizer if you haven't seen the dev vlog basically the belt centralizes all the stuff going down to the middle so it's easier to uh, put things into a sorter which is one of the things that have been recommended that people need in this game so four sorters and a central conveyor belt, which is good. It's getting dark, man. It's getting dark. 
Actually, we can show it also. I'll see if that new feature is in the game. Here we go. We can go into our settings and we can turn this up. So even though it's dark, it's still bright. It's all good. That's the, the new control that we can turn the gamma up. <sighs> right, okay. So there we go. Four pieces of conveyor belt and we're almost out of cash. <laughs> We've got 101 left. All right, another day in Hydroneer. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our our stuff off of the truck. And then from there, we're going to be setting up our first automated plant. Okay, so here we go. This is the start of our pipe. So we're going to come up over the beach. We're going to use we're using normal pipe until we get to this stopcock. The reason why we're using a stopcock here and not anywhere else is because if you let the water keep flowing through filters, even if nothing's working, filters degrade over time. Uh, chambers they need to be shut all the time until we, if you if you want to stop your line completely straight away just open one of the doors everything just stops and causes mass piles up and so on and so forth so now we're dealing with the conveyor belts now the one thing that I will address to you is that obviously with 1.3 everything's a little bit more streamlined because of all the suggestions that came from the community so if you're one of the people that did put in a suggestion thank you very much it's all good and it makes my life a little bit easier because things work a little bit better this was one of my suggestions and I don't know if it, if it was just me or other people suggested it as well but the harvester was always a little bit off when it came to just pouring straight into a ram drill so what he's done is he raised the harvester up which was somebody else's suggestion so it actually hit onto the conveyor belt properly and then the the ram drill was uh, the chute was raised a little bit more so it got into the top of the harvester so I think the harvester's top was actually decreased just a little bit, so it all lined up perfectly. So if you help, if you helped with that suggestion as well, thank you very much because, man, my life became a lot more easier when I saw that happen. It was all good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the fact, we're, okay, we're only using one RAM drill, but basically we do need like one of these. As you can see, the centralizer works, so the dirt should go straight into the sorter now instead of hitting up on the sides. Obviously, if it does clip into the sides, then you're going to have issues, but we'll get to that as we go. Thankfully, the uh, the spawn rate for gems has been turned down. Then we're going to have metal, and then we're going to have uh, this. What I actually will do, I'm going to change this over just a little bit. So my brain just clicked. So what we're going to do is we're going to have gems first, and then we're going to have shards. Then we're going to have metal, then we're going to have gold. And the reason why is because then I can put three furnaces behind here, and we can cook up stuff all in one big go. So I can actually put my mould closer to the sorter, which is good. Alright. Now we need our crucibles. Now the reason why we have four and not three is because we need one for a different section. To start with, this is literally how we have to go into it. This is just basic automation. The next step after this is almost full automation, but you do need to save up a little bit. But like I said, that's for the next video. We'll get into that again at some other point. So what I tend to do is, because these don't sit on flat surfaces, I either use a box to level out the floor, which is, or I just do this, or I dig a little hole and actually set it in to the actual step as well. Now, I'm not going to, nothing's going to run through this properly. I'm just going to be testing leaks. I can't remember which ones I need to patch up. So what I'm doing, I'm going to have a look now. Okay, so I've only got four corks because one just clipped through the floor, which was amazing. So in order to stop this one leaking, I'm going to turn this off. This basically means that the water won't flow through any other pipe um, after that sorter. If I do want something else afterwards, I can just put I can put something else on the end of it. It's all good. And I can turn the valve back on. So what we'll do is we will put the corks in. Because I can't turn them off because I haven't got any more belts. I mean, later on, if you, if if the sorters, if you if you don't want to put corks in stuff for the whole like peace of mind thing, what you can do is you can add another conveyor belt to this side. So you would take a conveyor belt and you stick it, and then from that point you put you'd basically turn the valve off and you won't need to have any water like flushing through. Um, what do we need next? We need so that's all set up. That's all set up. That's all set up. We need a box. And we need to put this underneath our ram drill because we need to start feeding it with dirt. So, I'm going to take a pile of dirt, stick it under there, all good. 
So the reason why you've got all this extra piping is just in case you're going to extend the build by any further or you, you had a little bit of extra distance between where you start and where you finish. And I mean, if you were going to go over the grassy knoll, then you obviously need extra piping and then you'll probably need extra elbows. But for the time being, this is as basic as it gets for like setups. I mean, I've tried to minimalize as much as I could. I really have and even cutting out one of the sorters to like save on money as well because obviously things have got a little bit more expensive in this game but it all works that's the thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on now we're gonna open up one of my chambers because we have got one battery and this was this was the reason why I made it because of this this extra part here and if it worked then we'd be all right so if this happens to you that it doesn't it, it basically doesn't stay within the thing and everything's sort of clipping through what you have to do is you have to save and exit and then go back into the game this should fix that problem it's an ongoing issue that has hounded max and a few other people who have been working on this game and it's uh, it just causes issues basically and then trying to get a block into, uh, trying to get a shard battery into this at the same time is a little bit annoying. So we've got a little bit of extra power coming through. And like I said, any shards that you're going to create, like you're going to get from this, you're basically going to start putting shards um, into like melt and then you'll start making more and more batteries. So we need to put this one there. It needs leveling out. So we need, our, we need another box. Okay, we need to get rid of that lump. So this is the lump, we'll get rid of that, and we'll put our little pan right dead in the center. Okay, so gems, shards, metal, gold, and if we get any, that will come out as um, cloutium, which is the new mineral. I'm going to move my mold here, and the reason why is just because... I, I've got easy access to all of my crucibles. I can just make another bar and then come off. Now, when it comes to shards, because shards are a little bit more rarer, what you can do with that is you can just basically, because they won't come out as much, you can take it straight off the conveyor belt, put it into the mold, and put it back even before you see another shard. Just, you know, give yourself a little break between sort of thing. All right, so we're going to start this up, and this should start working perfectly. Ready? Go. There we go. And that's how good it is now with this uh, with this brand new sort of like the height measurements between the ram drill and the harvester it just feeds straight in now this is a really slow process i mean this is beginner lot you know this will produce about 1500 coins just in gold alone every five minutes so not a lot but it's enough to keep you going so uh yeah i hope this has helped you guys um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to go from this to the next level and the next level basically includes adding a couple of extra round drills so the next step we will be we'll be basically going from crucibles to the more the new tipping crucibles which come with a built-in furnace from there that is where you would be able to go to that point you would basically have that as your fully automated plant and it basically just becomes a case of just extending your belts until there's nothing else for you to do. So the plus side to this build is that it's very easy to extend. What you do is you take these pipes off and extend them that way. And you add more ram drills, you add more harvesters. That's pretty much it. Now you can run two to three ram drills off of each harvester depending on your setup and depending on your needs and depending on how big you want to go. The plus side to this game is that everything works pretty well. And uh, yeah, all you've got to do is literally just sit here now and embellish in the fact that you have earned this much money to do this on its own. Like I said, there's not really a lot else you can do apart from basically automation. There's a lot of digging you can do. There's a lot of big builds you can do. This is how it all starts. It all starts from this point now. After this, you're on your own. You can do what you like. Do it however you feel, and at the end of the day, it's your choice to do whatever you want. So we got there you go. So we got a little bit of a crystal here, so we'll stick that in there. And in order to make it go a little bit faster, we'll open up the belt, which causes a stoppage, and we'll stick that back in. 
And now it's all running that little bit faster, which means our ram drill moves faster, the harvester works better, our sorters are working better as well. And we're producing gold a little bit better. And you would do this until all your chambers are full and so on and so forth. Now, ideally, what you want to do with your first amount of money is you want to go off, really, and buy some tool bags, because when your filters break, you need them repaired, and you need your mechanics repaired. But then you need to buy more round drills, more harvesters, and we'll go through that a little bit later. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification button below for all other updates. And I'll be back here either with another tutorial video or another thing that goes on inside my brain when it comes to Hydroneer and, well, what we can really do with this game. So thank you very much for joining me. Peace out, guys. Have fun. And enjoy Hydroneer. And I'll see you all later. Bye-bye for now.